I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. Pineborough School District residents came to last night's school board meeting in hopes of learning more about the proposal to create a private school for girls in Bloomingburg. But District Superintendent Joan Carbone says while the district would be responsible for providing special ed and transportation services, the district has no voice when it comes to running or approving the school. A sizable number of Bloomingburg area residents are up in arms over the plans for the school that uh, would serve a 396 home development project that uh, many believe would be Hasidic. Residents urge the school board to pay attention to what happened with the schools in Curious Joel and the Monroe area, which, after numerous legal battles, serves the Hasidic community. A much-anticipated cleanup got underway in the city of Newburgh today on Gidney Avenue near Chambers Street, where a pair of large overflowing trash containers had turned into a huge trash pile nearly a block long. The trash containers were brought in back in June to hold debris from apartment unit renovation work. But when the work was halted because of an asbestos scare, the containers stayed, attracting illegal dumpers who left trash on the street long after the containers had filled up. The cleanup needed a formal okay from the state after it was determined there was no asbestos in the debris. Hundreds of people flocked to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Middletown earlier today to say their goodbyes to Reverend Patrick McGuigan, a popular Carmelite priest who passed away Sunday at the age of 64. Reverend McGuigan was ordained in 1979 and had served at parishes throughout the area since 1991. He was made pastor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish earlier this year, following service as parochial vicar at Our Lady of the Assumption Parish in Bloomingburg and St. Paul's Church in Bullville. And his uh, past assignments also included service as chaplain to his beloved New York Yankees. Reverend McGuigan was buried across the street from Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in the Carmelite Cemetery. A report of a handgun stolen from a residence in the town of Liberty triggered an investigation that turned up uh, more illegally possessed handguns along with heroin, cocaine, marijuana, and drug packaging materials. The drugs and weapons were def with defaced serial numbers were found during the search of a residence at Crestview Apartments in the Village of Liberty. Four people have uh, been arrested, including two Liberty residents, 19-year-old Tanner Austin and 36-year-old Chacon Brewster, along with 24-year-old Gerardo Blanco of Jeffersonville and 22-year-old Joseph Colpin of White Sulphur Springs. All four face felony gun charges. Brewster, Blanco, and Colpin also face drug-related charges. Republican Orange County executive candidate Steve Newhouse is outpacing his Democratic rival Roxanne Donnery when it comes to campaign donations. The latest campaign finance report show Newhouse took in about $113,000 from July through September. That's uh, more than four times as much as Donnery. Newhouse received 40 donations of $1,000 or more, compared to three for Donnery during the most recent reporting period. Last week, the Orange County Legislature approved a proposed law that uh, would limit campaign contributions uh, from companies and public employee unions that hold contracts with the county. Salad bars, they're not just at restaurants these days. Schools, like the Valsgate Elementary High Tech Magnet School in the Newburgh District, have begun to incorporate them in their lunch programs, and early reviews of the Vales Gate salad bar have been positive. Children love it. My counts are going up every day. I do incorporate new stuff into it every day. You know, one day it'd be egg salad, another day it'd be tuna fish, one day it'd be chicken salad, different fruits, you know, so I do change it so it's not the same thing every day. Price Chopper and Turbana, the grower-owned banana company, have been donating salad bars to local schools through a program called Let's Move Salad Bars to Schools. Supporters say it's the perfect way to implement nutritional standards in school lunchrooms by giving kids a choice of what healthy foods they want to eat. Salad bars are critical in the sense that they give kids a choice uh, to choose their own fruits and vegetables. They learn to uh, choose what they like and, and take what they like and try a variety of different fruit and vegetable options. And salad bars are really the easiest way for schools to meet the new uh, school nutrition standards that have come down from the USDA over the last two years. And uh, 
kids are exposed to a variety of fruits and vegetables and as part of those new meal standards schools have to dramatically increase the amount and variety of fruits and vegetables that they served and salad bars are the easiest way to do that. The salad bar was originally offered to fourth and fifth graders at the Valesgate School. Now the program has been expanded to include the school's third graders. And for Village of Monticello Police, uh, their first clue that something was amiss was when they found a man passed out behind the wheel of a stopped vehicle. It was still in drive and stretched across both lanes of Hammond Street, blocking traffic. After police woke up the driver, 54-year-old Bradley Dunham of Livingston Manor, they discovered a still warm crack pipe and a baggie containing crack cocaine. Dunham was charged with driving while ability impaired by drugs. He was on parole for a prior felony drug conviction. Police say Dunham was the one-time leader of Cash Crew, a drug gang that operated in Livingston Manor. Clouds and rain will dominate our weather over the next couple of days. It'll be mostly cloudy Thursday with a chance of showers. Temperatures tomorrow will top out in the low 60s. Friday will be cloudy with periods of rain. The highs will be up around 70 degrees. Stay informed by starting your day with the Times-Herald Record. And when news breaks, you will find it right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.